Also on your wall are uh, is pictures with you and uh, Felix Frankfurter. What was he like? And I was Jackson's law clerk. Now, don't forget I was his only law clerk. So that office for two people, it was just me sitting in there. And the door would open and here would be Frankfurter. He had the crazy opinion, I mean, he really did, that if he could come in and convince me in case X versus Y to vote to affirm, Jackson was... That was, that was, he'd convinced Jackson. He didn't even have to talk to Jackson. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was just crazy. Jackson had been on the court for 20 years and knew, knew what he wanted to vote for and against. And what I said to him wouldn't make any difference at all. But boy, he was convinced. He knew that Jackson and I got along very well. We were very close. <clears throat> and um, so he was in my office a lot. He'd come in unannounced and he'd uh, sit down and chat with me about various things until it warmed over in the case X, Y, Z. And, and, um, and then he'd very, not so subtly, uh, praise the affirmance and so forth. And once he felt that he had convinced me, he left. He just, he'd just gotten another vote. Jackson's vote. <laughs> oh, I liked Frankfurter immensely. I'll tell you a funny story about him, though. Uh, I liked him a lot. He he was he was a bit of a nag. He he well. He once had a dinner for his law clerks, and by that time, I had been one of his law clerks because Jackson had died, and Frankfurter had asked me to become his third law clerk, which the chief approved. <clears throat> At the dinner, he served glasses that high, full of bourbon. I mean, it was, you took it and your eyes watered. Um, and I had my share. Well, I invited the Frankfurter to dinner one night at my little tiny home out in Green Acres or someplace. And um, it was tiny, I mean, it was tiny. And we had dinner down in the basement. And when my wife called dinner upstairs, we realized that there was no way of getting Frankfurter up the steps. <laughs> so I ended up pushing the rear end <laughs> of a Supreme Court justice one step at a time <laughs> to get him. <laughs> to get him up to dinner. And then, embarrassment of embarrassments, I was putting ice in each of the glasses and dropped a cube on his head. <laughs> and we all kind of stood there and watched the cube bounce around. <laughs> around around the room. Oh, God, what a night that was. <laughs> oh, boy. But um, anyway, we, I, we somehow got through it and had a good time. but. That was a night we had not thought out in advance. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Frank Furrer was smarter than hell. He wrote to everybody in the world. Um, he uh, had an extraordinary memory for cases. He, he would walk back and forth in his office, me sitting there making notes. And he would say, uh, why, there was a case right on that point in 1935. And he'd go over and pick out the volume of the Supreme Court reports that had that in it. Can't take it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to find the volume. <laughs>
were with Frankfurter as a clerk, kind of during the time period after Jackson died, in anticipation, I assume, of his successor, uh, which is John Marshall Harlan. What was he like? Well, um, <clears throat> Frankfurter worked very hard on Harlan to get him to become his second law clerk. He'd had one, Bill Lifflin, one law clerk on the Second Circuit. Mm -hmm. He'd been appointed from the Second Circuit, so he took his law clerk with him. So I would be his second law clerk. I was Jackson's only law clerk, Frankfurter's third law clerk, and Harlan's second law clerk. <laughs> A unique experience. Um, Harlan was lawyer's lawyer, judge's judge. He was, he was with the system every minute. He thought law, he dreamed law. We're talking about Harlan's appointment to the Supreme Court. And um, <clears throat> I respected him and got to like him tremendously. When, as he lost his sight, which he did in the later years, and he and I became quite close. And I remember sitting on his porch, I think it was in Georgetown, <sighs> late in his career when he almost completely lost his sight, mm -hmm. sitting on his porch, thinking to myself, this is an extraordinary experience because we talked about things we never talked about otherwise. Mm -hmm. Just personal things and how we felt about things and what we thought was wrong with the court and just a million things like that, that um, affected me a lot. And uh, I, uh, so I, I came to like him. The answer is I came, what was he like? I, I came to like him tremendously and I had tremendous respect for him because he really was a lawyer who wanted to do the right thing, a judge who wanted to do the right thing. Um, he never had any personal grinding of anything, some, something you wanted to accomplish uh, that was personal to him or anything like that. Uh, so I really, really had a great experience in the sense that I worked for people who, who wanted the best for the country.